My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesia resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this educational series of videos for anesthesiology trainees, I explore the components of the anesthesia informed consent process. In this particular video, I address how to discuss depth of anesthesia with your patients. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. And of course, this is a YouTube video, not medical advice. So if you need medical advice, talk to your doctor. Let's dive in. A central aspect of the patient experience is whether they will be awake and remember any part of their surgery or procedure that they're undergoing. You shouldn't take for granted that your patient, and even your surgeon for that matter, has an understanding of the different depths of anesthesia. For that reason, it's really important to make sure that you yourself have a good understanding of the continuum of depths of anesthesia and everything that comes along with that, including expectations for awareness and recall, expectations for breathing support, and expectations for pain management during and after a procedure. If that's something you need to brush up on, I'd recommend briefly reviewing the American Society of Anesthesiologists Depths of Anesthesia chart and you can also check out this video that I made right here where I talk through the different levels of anesthesia. One of the distinctions that I like to make in my mind and when I'm talking with patients is whether the primary anesthetic plan involves some level of sedation or if the primary plan is general anesthesia. To that end, even if the primary plan is sedation, consider consenting your patient for general anesthesia as a backup if that's something you anticipate may arise, even if it's not likely. As far as consenting a patient for any level of sedation, I think it's really important to make sure that the patient understands that there is a possibility or even a likelihood that they will be awake and aware of much or all of the procedure depending on the level of sedation that you administer. This can be disconcerting for some patients, in which case it's important to make sure that they understand that somebody from the anesthesiology team will be right there and able to give them more medication if they need it. For deep sedation in particular, I let patients know that they probably won't have any awareness of anything, but that it's possible and if they do, I'll be right there and can give them more medication. On the other hand, when I consent patients for general anesthesia, I let them know that that means that they will not be aware of anything, not be awake, not make any memories, and not have any feeling of what's going on. Having said that, consider letting patients know that they may have some awareness of the induction process where they're going under anesthesia or the emergence process where they're starting to wake up. And you may even wanna let some patients know that if you have a breathing device in place, they may be aware of that as they're waking up from anesthesia and that you need to remove it only once it's safe to do so. As far as breathing support is concerned, it's important to make patients aware of what interventions you have planned to be able to support their breathing. If your plan is to administer supplemental oxygen with a nasal cannula or a face mask, for example, you can let patients know that the plan is for them to be breathing on their own throughout the course of the procedure. However, if you'll be placing a supraglottic airway or an endotracheal tube, you should also let patients know that they'll have a more invasive type of device to help them breathe. It's really important to feel out exactly how much detail a patient wants. You, of course, want to be completely transparent with your patient and let them know what you'll be doing, but also keep in mind that if you provide very technical detail about a breathing tube being placed in a trachea, that may be enough to cause a significant amount of anxiety for a patient you just met and are about to anesthetize in 10 minutes. You might also consider setting expectations for pain management. For example, if you have a patient who will be undergoing moderate sedation and the surgeon's going to inject lidocaine, which of course can be unpleasant for patients, you might let them know that they can anticipate having some amount of discomfort at some points during the procedure, but again, emphasize that you'll be there to be able to help them with their pain management. It's also important to consider letting patients know if they'll be taken care of by multiple members of the anesthesiology team, for example, a CRNA or one of your co-residents or the attending anesthesiologist, just so that it's not surprising if there's a different person taking care of them when they wake up from their procedure. And of course, it's extremely important to address the pertinent risks associated with the anesthetic plan. I've made a separate video linked here where I give an overview of the risks associated with anesthesia. Here's an example of how I might consent a patient to undergo moderate sedation. So the anesthesia plan for you today is what's called moderate sedation. And what moderate sedation means is that you're going to be sleepy, but you still may 
be aware of sounds and what's going on, but the important thing that I want you to know is that I or one of the other members of the anesthesia team are going to be right there and can give you more medication if you are uncomfortable. I'll have you connected to monitors, so I'll be looking at your heart rate and blood pressure and oxygen during the entire procedure. The plan is also for you to be breathing on your own with a little bit of extra oxygen that'll come through what's called a nasal cannula that sits right below your nostrils. And I don't expect this, but if for any reason we needed to convert to general anesthesia, which means having you go completely to sleep and not aware of anything at all, then we always have that as a backup option. And here's an example of how I might describe general anesthesia to a patient. The anesthesia plan for you today is what's called general anesthesia. And what general anesthesia means is that you will be completely asleep, not aware of anything, not feeling anything, not making any memories. And once the procedure is all done, the plan is for us to wake you up and bring you back to the recovery room. I also want you to know that anytime we give someone general anesthesia, we always have to support their breathing. And the way that I'll be supporting your breathing is with a soft plastic device that will go in your mouth after you have already gone to sleep under anesthesia. You won't be aware of that during the procedure, but I do want to let you know that you may be aware of that as you're waking up and we take that breathing device out, but I'll make sure that you're comfortable the entire time. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out this video where I discuss the most common and the most serious risks related with anesthesia. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.